that this is a time to celebrate and recognize the many contributions, diverse cultures, and extensive history of the Latino community. Uh, my mother and father came to the United States as teenagers from Jalisco, Mexico. Um, it's on the other slide that we just had up. Um, and I welcome to I welcome you to share your countries of origin in the chat, um, your name, your organization, and your country of origin, so that we can all celebrate our collective diversity in this space today. My name is Esmeralda Martin Singh, and I am the Partnerships and Policy Manager who works on Build Up California, which is an initiative of the Low Income Investment Fund. Um, and if you could go to the next slide, I think it's two slides. Yeah, there we go. One more, please. There we go. <laughs> um, and we are a statewide network dedicated to the equitable expansion, improvement, and sustainability of early learning and care facilities. Our initiative began in 2020, and our purpose is to promote information sharing on early learning and care facilities issues including technical assistance, and we recommend legislation and regulation changes to increase access to high quality ECE facilities. We are members of the California ECE Coalition, and we are excited to welcome our fellow partners in the coalition to celebrate a huge win that we had this year together. Um, if we could go back one slide, I think, please. So this is um, this, oh, the last one. The one that you with the pictures. Yeah. So this is a photo of some of the folks from the Low Income Investment Fund. Erica Erickson, Angie Garlene, Pamela Campos, and Shelby Mazur, as well as Georgia, who is our intern. And we are part of the ECE Coalition. And we're excited to be here with our partners to celebrate some very exciting news. Um, so I am going to introduce um, some folks that are here to, to be in the space. I think we have next slide. I think this, we're not seeing slides. There we go. Next slide, please. There we go. So here are our partners in advocacy. We have um, with CCPU, Dion, Dion Arner, Jessica Magdaleno, and Miren Algori. With um, the ECE Coalition, we have Keisha and Zewi, and they are here to share about the work and, this, and celebrate the, the wins of ECE this year. So without further ado, I am going to start with our Child Care Providers United members who are here. And the first person I'm going to introduce is Jessica Magdaleno, who is an early childhood educator owner and founder of the Child Care Business Institute. She opened her family child care business in May 2001 when her second child was born. And Jessica regularly attends and leads workshops, conferences, and other educational events at many institutions. She is a member of several professional associations, including the National Association for Family Child Care, the National Association for the Education of Young Children, the Orange County Child Care Association, La Asociación Latina para el Cuidado Infantil, Child Care Providers United, Child Care Changemakers, Orange County Child Care Council, and is also a member of the Build Up California Advisory Board. Also here is Miren Algori, who is an early childhood educator, small business owner, and community advocate. Algori has been operating Little Blossoms Child Care since 1997, shortly after completing the Chicano Federation Family Child Care Program focused on helping women of color start their own business, their own child care business. Miren Albori is a Build Up California advisory member of the National Family Child Care Provider Panel with the National Center on Early Childhood Quality Assurance through the Office of Child Care, the Vice Chair, of the San Diego Child Care and Development Planning Council and member, leader, and child care of providers union. And Dion Arnor began her career as a social worker for Alameda County, developed her leadership skills at an early age by becoming the first woman president of Service Employees International Union 535, 
Dion is a native San Franciscan, proud graduate of UC Berkeley, a longtime resident of the East Bay. She represented California's 14th Assembly District for six years and currently works with the Child Care Providers Union. So I'm going to hand it over to Miren and Jessica, who will be sharing about the Child Care Providers United movement, who are also members of the ECE Coalition. Good morning. Um, Jessica gets to start the presentation. Yes, buenos dias. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome to be. I'm so happy that everybody's here today. So I am so happy to tell you how do we start CCPU as I am one of the founders. This is a great feeling, you guys. You cannot even imagine. We started about 20 years ago, started organizing. And we started with thousands of phone calls, house visits, knocking at the doors, finding childcare providers, both licensed and family and friends. It, it was a lot of work, a lot of work through all these years, a lot of no's, right? Until finally 2019, the governor signed. You can see the picture right there, AB 378. He signed, and it was the moment. It was the moment where all these years were worth working for, all those tireless, you know, going to Sacramento, knocking at the doors, visiting providers, making the phone calls right there on that picture. He's signing. He's signing our bill, the opportunity to be joining So... Miren is going to tell you what happened next. Buenos dias. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the warm introduction, Esmeralda and Jessica. Um, just to go um, along with the, the theme, the questions about where we are from. I'm originally from Mexico. And, um, I am the daughter of two immigrants. My father migrated to Mexico from his country of origin, and then my mother migrated from Mexico, where she was originally from, um, to the United States. So I'm the proud daughter of two immigrants, an immigrant myself. Um, thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you, Jessica, for that introduction about the hard work of many providers. My mother was one of the pioneers of um, CCPU, the Child Care Providers Union. And because of the work that she did, along with many other providers, here we are today. Um, today, we are representing over 45,000 providers across the state, licensed and license exempt. Today, we have participated in hundreds of actions that made it possible to have two historic contracts under our belt. And these two contracts have made it possible for many family child care providers to either remain in the profession or to open their doors to provide services to children across California. And we know that the work that we do is what make all the other works possible. Today, we are union strong and today we are powerful. Next slide, please. Yes, and our wins continue after that, after he signed our bill, and everything that Miriam mentioned, our wins continue. We jump into action and we buy for and secure supplement payments. Who here that our providers did not receive the supplement payment? It was a great money that we received to help us out in the crisis that we're, we're living in COVID-19. COVID sick days, right? PP, PPE multiple siphons to help stabilize child care providers through the pandemic. Pays based on enrollment rather than attendance. Allowing families to shelter in a place due to COVID. Family fees, family fees waived and providers reimbursement in full. Those are some of the wins that we can see right here that we went since we signed a real in 2019, which is great. And there's more to come, so wait for more. 
Next slide, please. Oh my goodness, the first contract won. Um, we won this contract back in 2002 on a Friday past 11 p.m. and it felt surreal. We were sitting there and we were just looking at each other because this is over Zoom. We're looking at each other's you know, faces on the screen and we're like, this is it. We did it, we made it. CCPU made this possible. Yeah, we made it possible. It took hard work. It took countless hours of work from family childcare providers, from our amazing, amazing organizers from the state of California. And for that, we're very appreciative. And through that first contract, we were able to secure 16 paid COVID closure days throughout June, 2022. We were able to secure PPE and testing. And we all know that because of those 16 days, that PPE and, and the testing that was made possible, we were able to continue to have California thrive. We were able to continue to provide services so parents could make it to work. We were able to, to get people who were sick with COVID, get the, the services that they needed, the care that they needed while we were taking care of all those essential workers' children. We were able to secure $40 million to create our training fund. Our training fund is really aiming at meeting every family childcare provider where they are. License exempt, license provider, exactly where they are and meet their educational needs, whether they need trainings, they need workshops or higher education. The training fund is there to cover all those needs. We were able also to get additional stipends for $1,442 per subsidized child for providers who were caring uh, for those children. And we were able to secure something that is fundamental for us to continue to keep our doors open and our business open, which is a timely disbursement of these supplemental pay. Because, I mean, what good it is to, to know that there is some funding coming in if it's not arriving on a timely manner when we need it to be able to continue to serve the, the children in our community. And also we were able to secure a hundred million dollars to create the healthcare fund because we know family childcare providers, whether they're licensed or license exempt, most of the time they put their own health on the back burner. We're always available. We're always providing services um, which is not easy, especially when we're serving families that work non-traditional hours. It's not easy to take care of ourselves. It's not easy to take care of our uh, medical needs if the doctor's offices are closed. But hey, how can we afford paying pricey, pricey um, insurance um, co-payments? And so with these healthcare fund, those, uh, supplemental payments that we make or co-payments would be covered. So we ask providers to um, sign up and next slide, please. And here's more, right? Didn't I tell you there's more? The second contract wins in 2023. Oh my goodness. Did we work or what? Here it is, our second historic contract wins, right? A pathway to implement payment based on actual cost of provider care. So this is what we're working right now, right? So all of us, all the providers that are here, please remember to fill out the survey. That survey is gonna help for this on, on this path to implement our payment. Subsidized rating, please, per child. This is great, right? 80 million per year for a historic first of its kind retirement plan. Yay! We're gonna be able to retire Woo! with money in our pockets. So go tell everybody, go tell everybody to come and join CCPG because we're doing great things, right? For all of our providers. We also continue funding the CCPU Healthcare Reimbursement Fund and CCPU Training Fund. 
two great items that we need to continue providing what we provide, the quality care that we provide in our programs. So I'm not going to tell you again, go tell everybody to come join CCPGU. We also got a two-year extension on the payment by enrollment and not attendance. So whether the children are here or not, we're going to get paid. Why? Because we're open, right? And we want to get paid because we're open. It's only fair. So again, guys, go tell everybody what CCPU is doing. And guess what? This is great. I have never seen in my 20 years this, but we lower the hours for full time. So now we can work up to 25 hours and get paid for 20 for full time. So great things. We're doing great things with CCPG and I'm telling you, there's more to come. So stay with us. Stay with us with the more things that we're gonna be working with our CCP2. I am so happy, so happy to bring you all these news, all these new things that we're doing and all the things that we're gonna be working on. Next slide, please. Yes, and you know, while Jessica talks about the second contract and I talked about the first contract and we're celebrating, let's talk about how these victories have made, been made possible because the road has been long. The road to victory has been very, very long. It started over 20 years ago with those providers coming together and with the support of two international unions um, and providers coming together and, and knowing that this was about respect, respect for family childcare providers, um, wanting to dignify our profession. And it took, some people believe it took a bargaining committee, it took a negotiating team. No, it took every single one of you on this Zoom meeting and it took the, the work of those childcare champions out there and those allies coming together. It took people getting on buses and, and you know, riding to the Capitol at the, at the steps of the Capitol, over 3,000 of us joining together and, and chanting and demanding a contract, demanding a fair contract for family child care providers. It took a lot of our brothers and sisters to work till their last breath, providing services to get where we are today. It took thousands of phone calls. It took thousands of emails. It took every single one of you to find your voice and to use your voice and demand that we got a contract and that we got the funding needed and able to stabilize the child care system in the best interest of California. So it took That's us fun. a beautiful picture show. It took children to march to the Capitol it took providers meeting in their counties, in their cities, and then coming together to the Capitol. It took for our union organizers to work tirelessly so we could get where we are today, today where we're celebrate, celebrating these two contracts, where we're celebrating our healthcare fund, our training fund, a retirement fund. When my mom retired, she had nothing to her name. And no provider should be put on that position. And today, because of the hard work of every single one of us, and because of these road that has been long, but all the love and, and, and the time and energy we all have invested, we are celebrating today. But let's not forget that it took all of us. You know that quote, it takes a village to raise a child? Well, it takes a village to raise, to uplift our profession. And for that, we are very, very appreciative. Next slide, please. Here we are, CCPU providers fought. We all fought together, all of us, made thousands of phone calls to Governor Newsom, 
countless emails we'll get on these contests like hey let's send 10 emails in the next 15 minutes and people will be like oh you already sent 21 we're like oh let's go for 25 so thank you for those emails thank you for those uh, phone calls and spreading the message through our, our social media um instagram twitter so appreciative to locally here in san diego to the um children um for um to to the coalition here in san diego for all the work that they did and, and in every city in every county in the rally that i talked about over three thousand people um at the at the steps of the capitol and and it took for our voices to be heard that we all came together and that we all worked together in the best interest of the children the families and the child care providers who provide services to those those families um and and like it says the last quote we made our voices heard and made it clear to governor newsom that we weren't backing down we visited the governor's mansion one evening and i'm, I'm pretty sure they were surprised to see our faces there and because of all these we won big next slide please We fought, right, with everything we got. Everything like Mireille mentioned it right now. And we got it. We got to the point where we are right now. And we got... I don't even know how to explain it. You know, this feeling. I feel so proud. I feel so happy. I feel so respect it right because we got all of the things that we had got and it, we got it for all of us and all of us work together and this is what we want we want to continue working together and with our allies to come along with us and to be part of our voices of what on the things that we need so we're going to keep doing what we need to do to continue getting the things that we need for our members, for providers, for the families, for the children. So this is not it. We're gonna continue and <laughs> we're gonna fill the capital. We're gonna, how, how was that day meeting? That day that they say that we were all jello that day, we light up the capital with our jello shirts. So a notion of yellow at the capital. Yes, that's that's how they were saying. So get ready, get ready for the the next time that we're going to do that. And we want you to be there with us and to celebrate with us all the wins, all the wins that we have obtained for everybody. You want to say something, Eden? Um, no, I thought we were going to go to the, the next slide. Awesome. Yes, all those all those um, actions culminated at the Capitol on June 15th, and our allies showed up and supported us. And because of that, we got our second contract the very last day of June, <laughs> I may add. And well, we stayed up till 4 o'clock in the morning. That's a whole different story. But what now? Um, so CCPU stands for diversity, for equity, and inclusion. So today, we continue to grow our union power. So this is what happens now. We continue to grow our union. We continue to make sure, like Jessica mentioned, that providers continue to join the union, that we continue to grow our membership because strength is in the numbers. The more providers in the union, the stronger that we become. Imagine what we have made possible with the providers that we have today. Let's continue to grow our union so we can have more victories under our belt. We're coming together to create change. As I mentioned, we focus on equity and inclusivity and diversity. We're diverse. I mean, look at Jessica, look at me. Family child care providers across California are diverse, our brothers who are family child care providers, our brothers who are black and brown, who are fighting for children across California. These diverse workforce wants to ensure that our family, friends, and neighbors providers 
have a seat at the table. Let me say that again. Family, friends, and neighbors. Many people across the community don't know that we have what it's called an FFN, a family, a friend, or a neighbor who's providing childcare services. And CCPU wants to make sure that these FFNs are at the table, that their voices have heard because their needs may be different from those licensed providers. At the end of the day, we are providing the same, the same services, but circumstances are different from every, for every single one of us. We must change the status quo. And this equity that we talk about, it translates into these new alternative payment methodology. We need to move towards an actual cost of care model. And we need to move towards it as soon as possible to truly represent equity. That's what equity means. FFN's providers at the table, licensed providers at the table, and licensed and licensed exempt providers getting paid by the true cost of the services that we render day in, day out to the families across the state of California. So that is what's happening now. We continue to grow our power. We continue to grow our union because we deserve the respect and the dignity of being the child care providers who continue to support the economy of the state. Thank you. I want to thank both Mira and Jessica for presenting today. We thought the union thinks it's incredibly important that you hear from the people who are delivering the care for, to negotiate those two incredible contracts. So thank you all very much. And thank you for allowing us to participate in this presentation today. Thank you so much for all of the hard work. And you're right, Nita, and it takes a village to do all this work. And we do it together because we know that all of our work is connected and we need each other to lift our work up. And I have some I'm going to save the question and answer until the end of the presentation, just so that we're on track with our time. Um, and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, turn it over. I'm going to introduce our next speaker, um, Keisha and Zaley, and she will be sharing about the work of the ECE Coalition. Um, she is a co-founder and woman in charge of Black California is United for Early Care and Education, and the president of the Mount Diablo Unified School District Board. She just spent seven years with the Child California Child Care Resource and Referral Network as the director of public policy, where she honed her child care policy expertise in an environment of um, that prioritizes culture and being anti-racist. Because of the support of the network and the courageous fellow co-founders, Keisha is the first leader of Black ECE. She earned her BA in social welfare from UC Berkeley, where she played the piccolo in the Cal Band, and she earned her Master of Public Health from San Francisco State University. She's a mom, dance mom, stage mom, a sophomore musical theater artist, and a wife to a geologist. And I'm going to hand it over to her so that she can share the work of the ECE Coalition. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I didn't expect you to read all that. That's funny. I don't have any slides. And so while, while Jessica and Mirren were talking with their pretty sides, I ran and put, up, put on lipstick because Jessica looks so great with red lipstick. So, <laughs> so that there was something more interesting to look at than while you just listened to me. <laughs> And red, because red makes you just feel like confident and powerful and whatnot. Basically, what, what CCPU did is what we won in the coalition this year. So that's it. Not really, but for, but for real. Um, I'm really glad to be here and really glad to see so many people here and so many familiar names if I don't even see your faces. And that's, but that's okay. I totally get it. Um, again, my name is Keisha. And I'm the woman in charge of Black ECE, which is a new, new organization taking the field by storm. Um, and my, I'm tasked with just giving you a brief overview of what the ECE Coalition 
um, achieved this year. And I think what's really funny is that as you as you see all those wins on, I don't know how many slides there were, but all those wins that CCPU achieved over the last, which the field achieves because, because we have CCPU over the last two, three years or so, um, and we think about like, well, what's next? And so I think we should absolutely use this time to celebrate and celebrate big because these are like historic. These are almost like other states can be envious because we're almost sort of moving up to California's, um, uh, the, the perception of the rest of the country that California is so far ahead and so progressive when in fact we're not, but now we're, we're almost getting there. And so these are really big things to celebrate and to really appreciate because as was illustrated, it's taken decades to get here, absolutely decades. And I'm so glad you all are all here to claim this victory. Even if you just came into it this year, if you were here on June 30th, it's your victory too. <laughs> so um, I'll just give a brief overview. The EC coalition, if you're not familiar, is a coalition of about 35 organizations <laughs> from throughout California that have varying constituencies, um, the child care workforce in all different sorts of settings, um, researchers, um, academics, just advocacy organizations. Um, I'm probably leaving out a category, but if, it, if they care about early childhood education, they're, most everyone is a part of the ECE coalition. And over the years, since I- um, I became familiar. I became an active member of the EC Coalition when I joined the network. So in 2017, 2016, and through the through time, we've had varying degrees of wins. But the thing that we noted is that we're more likely to win when we ask for fewer things. So this year, and and when we're when we are united um, in what we're asking for, that everyone leads with just the, the one or two or three things, sometimes 10, but that, that not this year. Um, so this year we asked for, a, I can't remember the right words, but rate reform that includes an equitable family fee schedule. So technically that's two things, but we made it in one sentence. Um, so what did we win? We won a commitment towards rate reform, um, meaning a different way of, of, of calculating how um, child care providers are paid in the subsidy system, and which is great, although I think the not so win is that our state just wants to do it slowly, and I believe they don't have to, and we know they don't have to, but um, but we're choosing to do it slowly and to make, make our child care providers wait. But Thanks to CCPU, child care providers are getting um, it, subsidy payments that are significantly increased, about 20% increase this year, or I mean, going into the new year. And that is fabulous. That is amazing. And that's like money in people's pockets right away um, to get closer to actually covering the true cost of care. The really, really, that's, that's an amazing win. But the win that like made me cry <laughs> is that we actually achieved an equitable family fee schedule. And what that means is so many families were able to come into the, um, to be, get help with paying for childcare since the pandemic started because of the expansion of the subsidy system. And so, and during all of that time, no one has had to pay family fees. And so, so many families and the families who were already there have had life changing um, money in their pocket because they didn't have to pay what for many families was hundreds and hundreds of dollars um, towards childcare that they literally couldn't afford. And instead they could actually pay all of their bills and not be stressed out, or they could send their children to soccer or dance, or they could have new clothes and shoes regularly. All the things that often many people take for granted that they're able to do for their families, families in the um, who depend on a childcare subsidy were able to do because of the, elimination for that period of time of family fees. But what we've won is continued um, elimination through the end of this month, but on October 1st, families who earn 74% um, or less, let's say, so under 75th percentile of the state's median income will pay no family fee. And that, in, that captures the vast majority of families 
who are in our subsidy system. And for those who who are above 75 percentile of the state median income, they will have to pay so little because we've capped the um, the limit at 1% of their household income. So where most families were paying hundreds of dollars, many families were paying hundreds of dollars, our highest income subsidy, subsidized childcare families, now they'll be paying tens of dollars. And so again, this is life changing um, and, and really such a huge win for Californians and something to celebrate because it too has been a long, long fight. And all, all um, accolades to the parents of parent voices, the parent leaders of parent voices who brought this up as, who brought this as a priority many, many years ago, who graciously like waited their turn for it to become the priority of the field to be our focused ask um, so that we get this win. Um, so yay, you should use your little emotions on your Zoom now and celebrate. Um, Almost everything else, because I can really keep us on time, almost everything else was covered in the previous conversation. One thing, two things that were delayed um, quickly is that uh, I believe two budgets ago, there's expansion in the number of childcare spaces, the number of children who can re who would receive um, child care subsidy, um, that we were to reach an additional 200,000 children by 2025, I think, and it would be rolled out so many, many of thousands of, of spaces each year. It was started with 120 or 130, and then we get a few more, not a few, but a lot more each year until we got to 200,000. Um, they delayed this year's um, rollout, so those won't come until next year, next year being July of next year and also so that was a delay to save money um and also sorry in state preschool um there was there is a delay in um requiring that 7.5 percent of children in enrolled in preschool are kids with special needs kids with special needs and also the credentialing of tk teachers um, I think that's it. Thank you, Keisha. I am 110% uh, with you on what you mentioned uh, in terms of parent voices and really celebrating um, that win that they also brought us in this past budget uh, cycle. I know that it's something that is historic and there were so many historic wins. Um, unfortunately, the parent organizers and parent leaders and parent voices weren't able to be here with us today, but we absolutely celebrate their hard work and their resilience. Um, and we are also grateful for their uh, ability to ensure that parents have an authentic seat at the table, because it's very important that those who are actually using these services and, and you know, supposed to be benefiting from the opportunities are also included in the decision making processes so that they can uh, elevate what's working and what's not working and the solutions that will really support them and their families. And so this whole conversation, um, watching everybody reflect on the work has been so uplifting because it is hard work to organize. But when you're able to show your strength in numbers, it's so inspiring. It's so moving. And it, it creates action. It really uh, encourages people to do the right thing. And, you know, speaking of doing the right thing, data shows that when women are represented in a union, their hourly wages are 9.5% higher on average than workers who are non-unionized. So uh, I really want to emphasize that point that right now unions are important more than ever to ensure that we're making progress towards eliminating the wealth gap because we know that women make less than men. We know that there are disparities deeper for women of color, immigrant women, and when you look at the field of early care and education, that's who we are. A majority of 
folks in the space of early care and education are women. We are women of color. We are um, descendants or immigrants ourselves. And so it's really important that we're working together, coalescing and building power in ourselves and our community because we deserve so much more than what we've gotten in the past decades and generations before us. And when I hear about how long standing this issue has been, I, I think back to my mom who 30 years ago was a young mother raising me and then my three sisters who came after me always working class, always struggling to afford childcare because she made enough to not fall, um, you know, under the, the poverty line, but living in the Silicon Valley, you know, here in, in San Jose at the heart of it all, it's, uh, it's expensive. Housing is expensive. Food is expensive. And so um, making sure that we're uplifting our voices and our needs are are really important um, and part of this, this work. So I wanna thank you all. And I wanna invite uh, Erica Erickson um, to share her reflections and her thoughts as well. I saw you were in the room. Yeah, so hi everyone. Hi Miren, Jessica, Keisha and Gian. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and your experience. I just want to uh, highlight the importance of the the especially the union wins, right? Um, the only ten less than ten percent of the workers in the United States are union are part of a union, right? And as Keisha was saying, um, we have the we have a great example here that inspires many other states and the world, right? Um, in United States, only 11 states have family child care union had before California. And from these ones, only five have agreement with the state. So the fact that we got the seat at the table, it doesn't guarantee that we have an agreement, right? So the fact that we have a negotiation team that Mirin and Yasika are members of it, and we have, like they mentioned, the organizers working behind the scenes and 40,000 members as part of it is a historical. Um, and like it's in it inspires and is a sparkle of light and change that it can light the whole world, not only the capital, right? But um, what we do here can inspire change in many other places. So I'm, as someone that was, <clears throat> has been working uh, in the child care field, but also be affected by it as a mom here, as an immigrant mom that doesn't have this, the support from family because my family is, is in Brazil, is not, the, it's very emotional, inspiring and exciting to see all this change happen. And as Pamela said, um, that benefit us women, uh, women of color uh, in different roles, right? As child care providers, as moms, as community members. And it's definitely um, very rewarding and inspiring to see um, leaders like Mirren, uh, Jessica in the front lines and uh, bring others with them in making the change that we need and we want to see. So thank you all for your leadership. And the, like Jessica said, more to come. The wave of yellow bright light and the blue with parent voices, right? It's like it's year after year, it's action after after action that we make change. And thank you so much, uh, the members and the organizers of the CPU for making the change we need to see. So thank you. Thank you, Erica. Um, beautiful, beautiful reflections and I believe we have Shelly Macer um, also um, with a reflection for us. Thanks, Pamela. Thanks, everyone. Erica, thanks for your work to create Build Up California. Um, we all stand on your shoulders when it comes to Build Up. I'm Shelly Macer. I'm the vice president of ECE Advisory and State Policy here at, at LIF. 
and get to work on build up as part of that uh, job. Many thanks to the union. Thank you, Keisha, for representing the ECE coalition. I think I just was listening and um, and reflecting on some common themes among uh, the two among all the presenters. And what I heard was persistence, communication, raising your voice, and collective action, and having a common message. And when you put all those pieces together, um, it resulted in these historic wins that we're seeing. And I get a chance to talk to uh, providers, to people who work in early care and education across the country. And they, and to Erica's point, they are watching California. Um, and to Keisha's point, <laughs> for the first time, because California has not been a leader and now is slowly coming into a leadership position that it should have taken a long time ago in the early care and education field. So with all of those together, I'll just encourage all of you who are on this call um, with in the spirit of togetherness and unified messages. Um, if you're not already uh, signed up for Build Up California's newsletter, if you wanna become a part of our network, um, we'd love to have you. As Esmeralda started us out by saying, we're a network that champions facilities. And we always talk about two kinds of infrastructure. There's the people infrastructure and that's what we're able to work on in partnership with the union and in partnership with the coalition. And then there's the physical infrastructure, which is the place where kids go every day and all of you who provide childcare work. And we need to make sure that those spaces are healthy, safe, warm, and inviting. And that's 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 the voices we're raising um, in our role here at Build Up. So thank you again, everybody. It's a really awesome way to kick off the month. Uh, we appreciate all of you being here. So I'm gonna let back to you. Thank you, Shelly. And I believe we are close to wrapping up. So we have a few closing remarks from Esmeralda. And then we are going to ask you all for your feedback uh, in a quick five minute survey. So Esmeralda, back to you. Great. And if there were any, I think there was a question in the no, chat that somebody you. asked and I wanted to make sure that I addressed it. Um, it was from Annabelle. Um, I am a union member, advocated and su supporter of our cause, but currently don't work with subsidized families, only private. I cannot access the health benefits, retirement plan, continue education. Um, how can I feel included? And Dion responded and said to contact your union rep so that they can work with you to see how you can become eligible for those benefits. And I just wanted to make sure I said that out loud so that if anyone else was thinking it, that you have the information, reach out to your rep so that you can take advantage of that. Um, and I, I know we're at 11.52, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask, I mean, I, I think we also wanted to invite people if they had any questions to throw them in the chat. I don't see any others besides that. So I just want to close out by saying big thank you to Miren, Jessica, Dion, and Keisha for all of this wonderful information that you shared today. Um, the spotlight really celebrated the work of our partners in advocacy here in the state of California. We know this work goes hand in hand with our own mission at Build Up California of expanding, improving, and sustaining early care facilities throughout the state of California. And they, they go hand in hand. We need both to happen. So um, what we really want to do now is we're going to throw in the chat a, and, and thank you, Pam, she put join our network. Um, there's a link in the chat. Feel free to sign up. Um, and there's now going to be a link in the chat for a very, very short three to five minute survey. Um, if you could please um, share your thoughts with us about today's meeting. Thank you for being in community with us. Um, we had Guadalajara, Mexicali, Brazil, Chihuahua, Tarawa, Oaxaca, India, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Ecuador, all represented. I love the diversity in this space. I think Dion wants to also say something, um, but thank you for being here in community with us. Yes, I'm sorry, because I, I thought of something that I think is really important for everybody to understand. There was another partner in all of these events that have been happening, and that's the Legislative Women's Caucus. And I think it's important for us to point out um, not only their participation, but their inc incredible support for the coalition and for the union um, in regards to in, in to regard to the wins that we got this year and in the past years, right? 
Um, and so I, I just want everybody to, it's important to say thank you sometimes, right? Very often we're calling our legislator to complain about something, right? Or, you know, whatever, but it's really important to thank them. And so for all of you who have participated in this conversation, but also participated in all the hard work that went into getting these wins this year, if you haven't reached out to your legislator, particularly your, your female legislator, because it's the Women's Caucus who really, really was there for us, please do that and let them know how much you appreciate um, what they, their work and what they've done for us. And thank you, Dion, and thank you for that reminder. And, and thank you to all of you for being here and for sharing this space and community. The link is in the chat again for the survey. And we hope you join the, the network. The link is also in the chat. Um, that is also there. So thank you and have a great rest of your day. I hope you all have an amazing Wednesday. Mm -hmm.